What's good with the YouTube Yard Dome? Big Flacco with ACP, a convict's perspective, man. Hope you guys are having a nice Sunday afternoon. Let's get to this video though real quick. But before we do so, please hit the like, subscribe, comment. Do all those things to help support your boy, right? And hit that bell notification for all. So you get all updates, all lives, everything that I'm spitting your way. Let's get to it though. You know, as we've discussed numerous videos over the past few years, you know, the level of violence is on a different level as opposed to the 90s and 2000s and even the 80s. Okay, um, for the most part, the 90s and 2000s, most of the violence were either melees and riots at certain prisons, um, it, groups removing an individual that was part of the opposition before they could touch down to a yard, and in some cases it was groups removing their own. But there was a lot more melees, a lot more riots, a lot more things that brought everybody to the table that would be viewed as questionable from time to time. So that was the last thing people wanted to do because back then, when we kick off a riot, melee, or something that was very serious, we get locked down. And in some places, they started to do moder modified program. They let the OGs out first, and it went by age groups until you finally got to the youngsters because they felt the youngsters were going to be the ones that were going to take action. You would be on these yards, and whether you were in a more dominated northern yard or more dominated southern yard, you get a different vibe, a different feeling. Like, if you're where the southerners were deep and the whites were deep, you could feel the hatred, you know, the dislike for the opposition. You even would get attacked in certain situations where people would sell soldier or try to gas you and all kinds of different shit, man. People had different rules to what they wanted to represent, okay? They didn't look at it bad as far as jumping on a dude that was walking with handcuffs, you know, on. They didn't look at it bad as gassing individuals when they walked by the cell. Even though Northerners did not really engage in that type of activity because we were told that we had to have a moral compass in our activities. We weren't there just to victimize an individual. We weren't there just to do those type of things. We were there to just plant our flag and have a place to stay. And some places we were able to do it, other places we weren't. Like I mentioned before, the splurge of new prisons that came in the late 80s and early mid 90s, even 2000s, spread the northerners thin in a lot of prisons. Whereas in the 80s, you'd have yards with the homeboys that had hundreds, hundreds of, of individuals. You know, they still weren't able to walk down south, but up north, they were pretty much in every facility. You see, back then, the yards were dangerous in a different way. You know, it, it could just kick off any moment. Northerners against Southerners, Southerners against the Blacks, Northerners against the Whites, Northerners and Blacks against the Whites and Southerners, whatever it may have been. You know, times were fucking crazy back then, so your energy was more focused upon securing yourself and maintaining a household that didn't have disruptions. So, another thing that was going on was, it was about salvaging careers. It wasn't about putting people on the BNL to get hit and removed. You really, at one point, had to do something so severe, and your due process was afforded to you, before you were to get hit. And a lot of times, people started locking up before they could be touched, because they knew what was going to happen. And yes, the SNY changed everything. It gave people the option instead of going out to the main line and dealing with whatever you may have coming to make these choices before you even get to prison you know and that used to kind of fucking shock me because it's like man people are dropping out before they even drop in now what has always set the northerners apart from the other groups is unity you know and unity was needed in order to combat all the things that were thrown at the northerners back then like they weren't easy times you know, it was a true struggle. People don't realize that. Like I used to school a lot of individuals, you know, being united is one thing. You became united once you decided to represent that red bandana. But having unity is something totally different. That's about carnalismo, respect. Not trying to smut your own brother up. Not trying to cause conflict. Not trying to be a detriment to activities. You know, and in different environments, it depended where you were at, if that was going to occur. If you were in a stronghold, right, you would see a lot more politics being played within their own collective. Whereas if you were on a yard where there's only 10, 15 homeboys, you had a whole other agenda on that yard to try to establish and plant your flag. Some of the things that people were being removed and being killed over, we at that time back then were trying to salvage careers. We were trying to give homeboys the benefit to clear their name. We were trying to give homeboys the opportunity to still represent 
La Raza Norteña. And see, back then, these were real times because we was really at war with the opposition. There wasn't no peace. There wasn't no, like, coexisting. We would try to coexist on some of the lower yards, but eventually it would just fucking blow up. But for the most part, man, like I said, you never knew what was going to happen from one day to the next. And they, all these prisons that were opening up, people had to fight for those tables. They had to fight for the showers. They had to fight for the handball courts. All that shit was not just given. You know, a lot of sacrifices were made. And as the SMY program was developed, you know, there was basically a recruiting war, basically, as far as recruiting back those who were thinking about walking away. Recruit those that maybe had a bad call made on them before they go to the SMY side. So it was always encouraged to salvage a career before you end a career. It would be based upon basically one's career, how long he'd been in the system, how much time he had done, what type of number he had, as well as what his past was. Was he viewed as an honorable soldado? Was he questionable? The lackluster, the efforts. All those things would be taken into account before one would make a decision where they would have to go or not. And you would go through a thorough, thorough investigation, like basically for the exhibits, you know, uh, IR reports, you know, for, from witnesses. And then basically you would also run an investigation as far as asking questions. Okay, what are you doing? What happened here? What did you do this day? Trying to get a feed for the, what the truth was. And then after taking all that information, you would decide where that individual could career could be salvaged or he had to go and I'm proud to say that during my you know tenure in the system there was a lot more individuals that were given the benefit of the doubt to continue their career all this stuff that's been going on you know on some of these prison yards you know with people taking out their own their own people it's not impressive to me I'm gonna tell you why because a lot of times these hits are being done by a victim who doesn't even see it coming and then you have two or three people that are usually fucking in on the hit either stabbing him or being the bombers afterwards so there's nothing really impressive really like when someone does a hit like that i've said that before it's easy to hit your own when they don't see it coming you know you're getting them at their most uh insecure position because they're not looking for you to be the one to attack them they're looking at the opposition you know that's why i always said you know, you see where a man stands when he's in battle against the opposition, against the enemy, or against another group. You know, when you got to take a, a steel piece and put it up in the next man, in battle. Where they may be coming at you with a fucking piece, you know. Where you may be getting off with three or four dudes that have, like, different types of weapons. That's where you find out where a Russell Dollar is. Not when they go hit one of their own. That's easy to do. That's why they always, every time they do it, usually the victim dies. Because it's so easy to do. The victim's just sitting there and just doesn't see it coming. Bam, they whoop. They start booking the dude. When shit kicks up, though, that's when you find out who's a real man. And see, that's why you have all these, you know, these Martes that are happening. And it's done over stupid shit. Like someone ain't paying or someone's trying to freelance or someone disrespected this individual. And someone decided to put a green light. Because now you got all the big homies out there. And the examples that the big homies kind of set, I'm going to keep it 100. I, I never liked that. I never thought that anybody should really have to have a security detail team on them. I think you should always have one or two soldados with you, especially for your leadership, but you should be ready to handle your own fucking business as well. Why are you going to have nine dudes defend you just because they're tra someone's trying to attack you? That makes no sense. I never agreed with that because it makes your soldados on those yards feel like they're inferior or like they're less because you're this big old important person that has to have fucking nine people following you all around, you know? There was yards back in the days where a detailed team was all the manpower you had on a fucking yard. You know what I'm saying? And you had about 200, 300 oppositions and the homes were still ready to rock if they had to rock. Killing your own people, I don't know when that became part of the regulars, right? Part of the fucking rules, part of the bylaws. It just, to me, it makes no sense the direction in which some of the choices of these individuals have made. Like I said, when we were on those yards, I'm not... I'm not trying to compare like that too much, but what I'm saying is, it was get out, it was war. We didn't have time to fucking bullshit politics against anybody. You know, politics would be played, right, by those that needed to plan up. But everything else was on the up and up. Security was the foremost, most important thing to make sure every day when we hit those yards that we came home safe. <laughs> you know, we didn't get hit, that we, nobody died. 
and that when we seen someone prepared to make a move on us, we were ready to meet head steadfast with the same type of energy and handle our business. You gotta remember in the 80s and 90s, a lot of relationships eventually started to severe, so it was a little bit different. Everybody was going at it with each other, right? And it was fucking vicious. You know, it's, it's a whole different type of fucking viciousness when you're going at it with a group that you look at as your enemy. It's a, little bit, it's a little bit harder when it's one of your own people that you're going to go deal with it for whatever reason. But at the end of the day, you're going to do what you're supposed to do. Like I said, it's not hard to hit somebody when they don't see it coming. So yeah, there's a lot of violence as far as uh, in-house murders and you know, people take care of their own in the prison system today. But half of those have, are happening on the SMY, not on the main line, okay? And like I said, a lot of it is things that, you know, surprise me. It surprises me that people forgot what the lucha was about, what the cause and struggle was about. And that, you know, it was a cause and struggle. I'll tell you that right now. Some people want to make the little comments. They don't get it. They weren't living it. You know, I did. I lived it. And it was hard. It was certain things that we had to do on a day-to-day -day basis just to survive. And I've been places where I was the only homeboy in the pod or on the tier. You know what I'm saying? I've seen the hate that individuals had for me because of where I was from. You know what I'm saying? And I don't forget all that stuff. So when you hear about all the stuff that's going on now, right, which, which era was more dangerous and vicious and treacherous, it's going to be the, the years before the end of all hostilities. Like I said, people are dying, but this is a whole different type of people now. These are individuals that are whacking their own people. Finding reasons to whack their own people. And I just don't get it. People forget there was a time in the system where I ran several different prisons. I mean, as the, the overall, the whole prison. Not the whole, not just the block, but the whole prison. People forget. You know, I declared war on another group, a segment, on another race. In prison. And told them to be removed with, you know what I'm saying, with physical pieces. Like I said, this was a different era back then. What's going on now? All the kumbaya, but yet let's take let's take out our own. I don't get that part, and I never will.